guys welcome back we're here in the fern house uh, we're getting quite a few uh, irons in the fire here um, we're kind of expanding out we've got a huge day coming up on saturday and i'm for sure going to do a video on that should be our biggest pot filling and planting day of the year so uh, we'll be kind of going into that uh, i thought i'd kind of bring you along here this morning on what's going on we had 62 degrees here uh, last night uh, so I don't think the furnace has ran much at all. Usually the first thing I'll do in the mornings is walk through each of my greenhouses and make sure that everything is uh, working as it should be. Uh, I thought I might take you over here first and give you a little view uh, uh, in the, the bigger greenhouse. We've started planting in there a little bit, so uh, that's kind of expanding out into that greenhouse. I don't do that until I just have to because of the heat situation, uh, but it looks like we're in for quite a nice little warm stretch here. So. We went ahead and opened it up, started planting in there yesterday. So we'll go ahead and walk over there and I'll show you what we're into. Rain, rain, rain. That's the name of the game around here. We've got a couple of different things going on here today. We've got a few more pots to fill and then we need to start our first seeding and I'll show you that here just in a different bit. Different things we've done in here so far. We do a, uh, it's called an owl pouch. It's a petunia bag. Well, I'm sorry, it's a bag that we put petunias in. Uh, these are the wave type petunias that will trail and uh, we we mix them up and do solid collars both I mean, we got those bags filled and got the petunias in them and uh, the drippers in them and then uh, we got some of our decorative baskets and weekenders filled and planted yesterday so we'll come down through here and show you a few different colors that we did get there we do quite a few of these cone baskets. They've really risen in popularity the last few years. And we have a lot of different mixes and that's kind of the name of the game to try to come up with something different every year. And it's really hard to guess what this year's most popular mix will be. So you just kind of have to do the best you can and, uh, and kind of go with that and hope for the best. This here is a mini, it's a little smaller Bloom Master basket. We're gonna to try to fill some of those today. That's a three gallon basket versus our other bigger ones that are six gallon. We're gonna try these as kind of a little companion basket to go with those. Something that's a little smaller and a little easier for people to handle on their porches. All right, so really that's about all. We got a lot of pots and baskets in here ready for Saturday. Man, we got a big one coming up Saturday. But we'll, we'll talk more about that later. I really need to get out there and feed that baby calf. We're getting ready to seed tomatoes, and I spent a big part of, uh, of this morning trying to get the, the seed list ready. Uh, we need to go get that calf fed. Give me just a minute. We'll get in there and mix his milk up. Okay, I should have uh, mentioned we're, uh, I'm going to go ahead into the kennel there. That's where I uh, mix up the baby calf milk. And uh, I'll take you all in there. Once we get in there, it's going to be, uh, the girls have got several dogs in there. They board dogs for people when they go on vacation. They've been doing this a few years. So I'll take you in there, but once we get in there, we won't be talking because it's going to be so loud you wouldn't hear me anyway. So I'll give you a little tour of that, and we're going to do a little video on that later on to kind of show you uh, how they got started and, and what they do here. So we'll walk on in there, and I'll just give you a view of that, and we'll mix up this calf milk. got a calf over here that's pretty hungry. I'm a little bit late this morning. So we need to get over here and feed this booger. All right, you guys probably remember little Jarvis from the earlier videos of the, uh, the little calf that uh, like to froze to death and starve to death. He's really doing good now. Um, starting to gain weight. And nice looking coat on him. You can see his little short ears. His ears are 
Uh, the ends of his ears did freeze. So they will just kind of dry up and fall off of there. But he's still going to have some ear, just not what he would have had. I give him four pints of milk in the morning and four pints in the evening. And it is a powdered calf replacer uh, that is medicated. It's 20% fat and 20% protein. But he also gets a sweet feed, 16% calf grower sweet feed, and some really good soft hay. So that's what Jarvis is getting now, and I'll do this for about eight weeks, and then we'll wean him off to just grain and hay. Man, he loves his milk, though. That's his favorite. He's getting a little bit ornery. About put me out of that pen yesterday. Okay, that got the little calf fed. Now, we really need to start working on trying to get ready to seed. And uh, I'll show you how we go about seeding what we seed in and and uh, the heat mat that we use. So I'm probably just going to set a tripod up in the greenhouse and we'll kind of go over a little bit of that. Okay guys, this is the greenhouse that we seed in and I seed in here because it's usually one of the first ones that I open up and it's also one that I run quite warm early. It's the one that we planted the Bloom Masters in and I will run this greenhouse anywhere between 65 and 70 degrees for a while until things get established and I get through my seeding. We're always continually kind of rotating plants in and out of here. This is kind of a starter house. We get them in here, get them going, and then move them on over to the big greenhouse until we get to flats, and that's usually when we'll kind of finish up with flats in here. So uh, one thing I wanted to give a little tip uh, to you guys today, any of you guys that are uh, thinking about starting a, a greenhouse business or just growing plants as a hobby, we are right now in probably the most dangerous time of the year as far as watering goes. Uh, that is something that you have to learn and learn quick. Uh, here we have a stretch of three, four days with no sunshine, and uh, that is a very dangerous time. Uh, I don't water a plant unless it adds, absolutely has to be watered. If I see it starting to wilt, pretty hard I'll water uh, don't let it go too far but you want to keep those leaves as dry as you can when you have a spell like this like we're going to be having here the next few days I've got some petunias and uh, caliber koa up there that are just on the verge of wilting so we're going to see what happens here today I won't water those unless I see that they're going to be hurt uh, because if you water them now they're going to lay wet and uh, You'll have a lot of trouble with fungus and botrytis, which is a, a, a disease that can affect the stem. So that is something you want to watch out for. Be very careful. You, through February and most of March, you've got to be very careful when you water and how you water. Okay, guys, I just kind of wanted to show you what we do here to get ready to seed. Uh, the first thing that I'll do is uh, lay down a couple pieces of insulation here. Uh, it kind of helps, I believe, to kind of contain the heat because we use a heat mat. And, uh, but also, I like to keep that heat mat. We just have some old snow fence in here for benching, and I like to keep that heat mat off of those, uh, those uh, metal wires there. But it just kind of seems like it reflects the heat back a little bit better instead of just going out the bottom. Uh, but that's what we do first. Now, uh, we'll unroll this heat mat here. Uh, and it is controlled by, by this uh, little thermostat here, little controller. You'll have a little temperature, a uh, little thermostat there you stick in the soil and it kind of helps keep track of, of what you want your uh, soil temperature. And I like mine between 70 and 80 degrees uh, to seed. We can usually get uh, cabbage and broccoli uh, in about three days. Tomatoes we can get to germinate in four to six and peppers usually take seven to ten um, but different plants need uh, a little more heat than others peppers tend to take a little longer to germinate and they definitely need bottom heat so you can buy this we bought this through growers supply uh, all this uh, material here and uh, it's worked quite well for us so another little thing on this controller that I took shortcut on uh, was this little ground here uh, it is important to ground it uh, because uh, if you don't, 
you can get a little it's not really a shock but you can get a little tingle if you touch that mat and uh, I'm a little bit jumpy when it comes to that so uh, it's kind of important to do that and it'll help protect uh, the mat and and it'll last longer if you do that so we're gonna do a little better job of grounding that there this year and so I'll show you the, the kind of the process here and we'll get this mat unrolled Looks like we've got it turned around the wrong way, so I'll switch it around here right quick. Okay, this is a brand new mat for us this year. We've always used these kind of mats, uh, but we have had narrow ones and two or three and, and always kind of hooked them together. So I went ahead and broke down and bought a, uh, a big one. This one here is uh, uh, about four feet by 10 feet, uh, maybe a little longer than that, but uh, uh, it works really well. So we are going to, I've got uh, some wire I wanted to show you too that you're supposed to roll down over top of this. This has uh, little metal strands and they uh, go through it and heat this surface up and uh, they say you're supposed to put the wire down as kind of a barrier between this mat and the plug trays so uh, that's the next thing we need to do is get that down there just kind of like a little screen for a window so just a very very fine screen material trick with these mats and something that I've had a little bit of difficulty with in the past is cold spots. Uh, a lot of times it's not evenly heated. This mat was guaranteed to have an even heat throughout. So that's one reason I went ahead and, and bought this one this year because uh, we'll uh, germinate quite a bit of seeds. Uh, and it's never a good thing when you have a plug tray that's half germinated and half not. Uh, or maybe some will be two or three days later. That affects the plant throughout the, uh, the cycle of growth until I sell it and never does match up with the others. So it's important to get them all to come up at the same time. So that's the reason we've kind of upgraded to this one, hoping that we can get a little more even heat. Okay, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go get a uh, tech screw and uh, try to get this, uh, get this little setup grounded. I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, this is what I've come up with to try to get this thing grounded. Uh, this might not be the best way in the world to do this, but I really believe it'll be sufficient. Uh, I was going to tech screw it to this chair, but I'm afraid that might not have been quite good enough because the chair is sitting on the fabric. The fabric will be wet most of the time, but, but I've gone ahead and decided to go this route, and this, will, this should ground that controller sufficiently enough to, uh, if there's a problem. But I'm basically just going to, to run, this is electric fence wire, just run that through there and, and twist it really, really tight around the head of this nail and then drive the nail into the ground. And I think that'll be good enough. It's a whole lot better than what I've been doing, which is nothing. You guys that are electricians out there are probably shaking your head. Now don't try this at home, by the way. <laughs> this is Pratt's greenhouse way of doing it, not necessarily the right way. that just as tight as I can so it has very good contact.
that's nice and tight alrighty so we're just gonna drive this in the ground that's just a big old spiral spike nail and that's nice and tight alright so that should have it grounded won't take long to find out okay guys so we're, we're heading on to the next step here um, we just use our basic potting soil that we use for everything else they, they sell a seed starter uh, but I buy one pallet of a little higher quality soil and uh, that's what I use it's still a lot cheaper than the seed starter and uh, we've been doing that for years we've had no problem with that if there's any big sticks or anything like that in there I'll get rid of it but basically I just get a little bit in a wheelbarrow and we don't need much today because this is our first seeding and we're not going to seed a whole lot we're going to do some cabbage and uh, broccoli and our very first tomato plants of the season which will be going in big pots uh, we don't plant the main crop until the 15th of March but uh, this will be the first the first batch and these will be big um, potted tomatoes that are staked and uh, some of them will even have tomatoes on them uh, by the first of May now, we do one variety that's called a tumbler I'll tell you a little bit more about later that's a basket tomato that I'm really impressed with but uh, we'll just add a little bit of water to this and get it thoroughly mixed in I always add water to my potting soil because if you'll do that and mix it in really good before you put it in the container, any kind of a container, container, including a plug tray, when you go to water that tray in, you're not going to have a lot of runoff. Uh, the water just falls right through it. it. Needs a little moisture added. We just do the best job that we can, can to get that evenly mixed up. All the little lumps out of it. If you see any large pieces of sticks or something that you think might prohibit a, a seed from coming up well, of course we'll throw that out okay that looks really good now we seed in a 288 count plug tray uh, it's the same thing a lot of our flowers come in and um, we've had really good luck and we can separate that up into different varieties and keep it all nice and neat it's really a whole lot easier to transplant uh, you don't tear up the roots and, and that kind of So that's the reason we go with that. It's a little bit tedious. Trina does all the seeding, and I'll, uh, I'll show you her doing that and how she does it in just a bit. But we just uh, we fill that up, and uh, I apply just a little bit of pressure, especially around the edges. I'll bump it a couple times to make sure that it's going to be nice and even. I want every hole to be the same. Okay, that looks like that's a good job. Apply just a little bit of pressure and rub over that with my hand and make sure every hole is going to be the same. And then from here, it goes on to Trina. And give me just a second, and we'll, we'll show you how she does that. Okay, after the plug tray gets to Trina here, she does all of our seeding. And this is a, a very small seeding because it's our first and there's not a whole lot of things that need to be seeded yet but uh, she individually places these seeds in the uh, cells there and that way it keeps them all nice and organized and we just do them in rows and we don't really waste any seed that way so uh, this first seeding we basically just do our most popular uh, tomato plants and uh, we do three uh, varieties of cabbage and that's basically and, and broccoli that's about all we're going to do here today so it's not a whole lot but it's a start and uh, i will show you some of those other varieties after we get them on the heat mat um, the one that she's uh, seeding right now is a tumbling tom uh, it's a really good uh, tomato for hanging baskets and it uh, it comes on really early there are times that we have had ripe tomatoes by mother's day they're just a cherry tomato uh, but man, they really produce lots of them and uh, they're really pretty in the spring when you're selling and you've got ripe tomatoes on a basket uh, They kind of sell themselves But uh, just kind of wanted to show you she basically just goes along and I want to uh, kind of adjust um, What I said earlier on the plug tray filling um, 
this soil was just a little bit too damp and it's really fine and I added just a little bit too much pressure when I filled these trays so it was packed a little bit too tight so we kind of had to go back and, and redo that and and that's something you'll just kind of have to learn as you go along but uh, we redid them and now they're not packed quite as tight and hopefully they'll do a little bit better but basically she'll uh, she'll get these trays seated I'll take them over put just a light coat of soil on the top of them and then we'll place them on the heat mats but that is basically all there is to it just turned around and saw that we've got a friend here oh this is not gonna work at all <laughs> Oh, two of them. You girls are not allowed. Okay guys, uh, that's uh, it for today's little seeding. We do have a little bit of uh, broccoli to to uh, sow yet, but I thought I'd go ahead and wrap this thing up. I thought I'd show you the early tomatoes that we raised for our pots. And we will transplant these in about two weeks into flats, then grow them out for a couple weeks in flats, and then transplant them over into pots and hanging baskets. So we do a Super Sweet 100, that's a little uh, red cherry tomato. We do a mortgage lifter that is a large beefsteak type pink tomato, a better boy that's a good average red tomato, early girl that is a smaller eight ounce but early red tomato, a Mr. Stripey that is a striped uh, yellow, red, and orange, and the Tumbling Tom that is a basket that is developed for hanging baskets. So uh, then on, the, on cabbage we do Bravo, Early Flat Dutch and OS Cross, and then we'll do some Pac Man broccoli. Pac Man has become a thing of the past, but I have located some seed, and I really like Pac Man. It, it comes on early and it bears uh, up until late spring, early summer. But uh, we really like it, so we were lucky enough to get a little bit of seed to last us a few more years. So, but anyway, uh, we, we'll be seeding something every week from now until the 1st of April. But this is the first little seating. I wanted to bring you guys along for that. Thank you all for watching. Catch up with you on the next video.